What's happening troops? Welcome back to another video here on the Sharp Dev YouTube channel. If you're new around here, why not hit the subscribe button? Plenty of content to come. In today's video, I'll be addressing a question that I've been asked quite a lot on Instagram and it's kind of, where are the match day vlogs? When are they going to start back? Are they coming back? What's happening with them? Firstly, before I get into it, I should really tell you guys why I started doing them in the first place. <laughs> I created this channel in December of 2015 whilst I was in college studying sports. Now I'm the type of person that I need to be doing something that I'm passionate about and that I love in order to feel fulfilled kinda at the end of the day. So in school I managed to kinda get the grades to be able to go to university to do a degree that would have been absolutely trash, something I wasn't interested in. And the actual degree that I wanted to go study was the one to become a PE teacher. So I didn't have the maths qualification in order to get into that. So I just decided, fuck it, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to study sports for a couple of years. <laughs> During the time that I was in college, I was always massive on YouTube. I loved watching YouTube. I'd prefer to watch that to Netflix, to TV, to all the different avenues you could consume some type of content. I watched guys like KSI, Spencer FC, IFL TV, they were one of the first channels that I ever watched. When I was in school, I didn't have the confidence or really have the, the motivation to do anything on YouTube. But when I got to college, me and a couple of my mates were like, let's just make a group channel. Hey, this one? Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! He what is that? Post match. I better get three likes on this video. And that group channel was absolutely atrocious, but at the same time, we all decided that we will start our own individual channels as well. And I started this YouTube channel right here. So, as it was close to Christmas, I only had one wish, and that was to get a Canon G7X, like Spencer FC, or Casey Neistat, or Roman Atwood. And that's what I got, and I actually was able to convince Sharp Moore. First time she's ever been spoke about on the channel to give me the camera early. So the camera's quite good, but I soon found out that there is a time lapse feature. So I thought I'd give the time lapse feature a little go. So I found that I was wondering and asking myself, what video will be your first? What should you do? And then I decided, like, you've been going to Rangers games all your life, really. This is something you've did every single weekend. So Rangers were playing. Hibs, we were in the championship still at the time, and I thought to myself, I could just go along, get some footage, put it together, and I'll upload it and see what happens. The response was actually mental. For a first video, I've heard a lot of people say that they made videos for years and hardly get any views. This video just kept going up and up in views. I think it ended up settling at about 10,000, but I remember just looking at them and they were going up and up and the comments and stuff like that were, were going and people seemed to be really interactive and loving the video. I never went into it to get views, to get people to say they liked it or anything like that. It was just literally through wanting to make my first video. That resulted in people obviously asking, can we get more? And I just made more. As my obsessive nature started to grow fond of the art of YouTube, but also grew fond of business, videography, just making videos. And as a result, I started to get crazy opportunities just through picking up a camera, learning how to work it, learning what ISO means and aperture and all that sort of stuff, learning how to edit, how to split videos, how to render them, how to upload them. And for weeks and weeks on end, all I was doing was juggling college, training, YouTube, and videography work. As the YouTube channel grew, and of course I know it's still really, really small, we want to try and get higher and higher with this channel, I started to have experiences and I started meeting people that just changed me. Changed me more so with my confidence. I adapted that mindset to just fuck it. If you want to do something, just do it. Don't wait about. If you get an idea, just literally go out and do it. What's happening, troops? Welcome back to another video on the Sharp Dev. I remember when I used to play football, man. I was unfit. I was always kind of last in all the running exercises. 
So I said to myself, do you know what? For charity, I'm going to run a marathon. And I dealt with a lot of doubt going into it, but at the end of the day, it was for charity, so I had to fulfil my obligation. Essentially, I was doing stuff that took me out of my comfort zone, and in return, that led to me being happier in myself, really, that I was doing stuff that I was uncomfortable with and I was completing it. In 2018, was absolutely killing it on YouTube, was loving making content every day, but with anything, life struck. Nobody wants to click on a video and somebody's looking back at them saying, oh, well, today was shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want to go on a video and you want to kind of escape reality and live vicariously through someone else for that limited time and be entertained, have a laugh, or be educated, or whatever, whatever your purpose is by watching something. And for me, the tail end of 2018 and 2019 were crap. Didn't feel myself, didn't feel motivated. Don't get me wrong, I still had unbelievable opportunities and still created some great memories, but I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't working hard enough. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. During the tail end, the 2018, that's probably where the Match Day vlogs started to hit a new level, new level of production and putting them together. That was coinciding with my experience on the side of videography and working for different companies. But at that time, day to day, I was just like, Pfft. then Rangers play Celtic at the end of 2018. I make a vlog on it, I'm absolutely buzzing. Then there was a kind of backlash and negativity towards matchday vlogging and I was like, screw this, I don't need this. I'm already feeling unmotivated and I'm not doing really on other facets what I want to do. So, patch it. At the time, it was hard, but now I totally get why a lot of people were against match day vlogging. As a genre, as that kind of started to become a trend, I felt like it totally changed. Like, when I started, it was just for the love of making videos. It was just for the love of Rangers. But for me, there was a lot of people now getting into it because they thought it was a trend. They thought that they could get attention or they could do something along those lines, I don't know. And there was no wonder that people started to turn against it because it was just so obvious what was happening in the space. I remember getting certain criticisms and stuff like that, which for some people might have thought was just and fair, but people thought that when I did these matchday vlogs, I literally held a camera in front of my face the full time. What they didn't know is over that last couple of years, I'd been putting in crazy amounts of hours in order to progress myself when it comes to making videos for different companies and the different experiences that I was getting coinciding with my experience in football so pretty much what I was doing was combining both worlds I used to use a very small camera like a GoPro and because I knew football if there was an attack and I knew something was going to happen or whatever I'd press record the camera it was a wide angle lens and then you would get your reactions. There was no camera floating about here, there and everywhere and people that came with me to the games or is surrounding me where I sit, oh no exactly that. So I started at 17, but by 2019, as I said, so obvious people were doing it for the wrong reasons. So with my videos, they were getting bigger, they were getting better, each video as it progressed, but my attitude was dwindling. Nowadays, my attitude towards match day vlogs and stuff like that is, is pretty negative. I think there's a couple of channels that do it really, really well, but there's a lot of channels now out there that are just clutching. And as I said at the start of the video, I can't do something that I'm not passionate about, that I don't love, that would show, that would show in the videos, which is a huge reason probably as to why um, I'm just getting back to uploading in the last four weeks. In fact, at the start of 2020, I tried to make strides to get back to YouTube because it was when I was making these type of videos, when I was being creative and trying to make videos kind of every single day, that's when I felt most fulfilled, but even then I was struggling. However, I was finding myself, I was finding motivation in new ways. The gym, of course, I went ham at the start of the year. I started a powerlifting program. Obviously, before that, I did train like five times a day. Five times a day, Jesus Christ, not like five times a week or whatever in the gym, but it was unstructured, you know what I mean? You're just sticking to the push-pull leg split and just no even really progressing. So I started this powerlifting program at the start of the year and I was buzzing. Um, and I started to feel like I was finding my new self. Obviously lockdown and all that happened, but it's the same for everybody really. And then now we're kind of coming out of lockdown, I'm like, I need to get back on this. I need to start making videos again because that's what I love. So 
what I love to do, so that's why I'm here. But yeah, to conclude, the match day vlogs aren't for me anymore. I don't think I'll be making that type of content. Um, definitely surrounding Rangers. So that's that, that's that question answered. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.